I have created quite a mess here. I think it's about time we get it all cleaned up. Let's get a little more organization going in our sky base. Hey, welcome back everybody, it's Shino, and we're back in all the mods 9 to the sky. Hope you're doing well, I'm doing good. Last episode, we did uh, a break and we took care of some magic stuff. Yes, we did, yes we did. A little blood magic going on, a little Ars Nouveau, uh, trying to get ourselves ready for the end game. We did get this to a tier 4 altar, I have not gone any further further with that since the last episode and I've not done any work with trying to figure out what the hay's going on here. I'm going to keep working on this. Uh, I've seen a lot of comments from some folks uh, kind of give me some advice and so yeah I appreciate that very much. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Uh, I did put a couple of because I thought maybe I thought maybe that maybe if they were landing on this block it was you know outside that two block range from the uh, blood altar so I put some vector plates to move them uh, directly Directly into the center and then I can kill them right from there it didn't do anything so still uh, I've tried two different mob spawners uh, tried um, what was it zombies and then pillagers and I've not been able to get on a consistent basis uh, essence going in there and there's some other things that we can do that we will be doing uh, in later episodes in fact I got to uh, as I was editing through last episode, I realized there was a lot of content that I had to cut out because I recorded almost three hours of uh, footage uh, for that last episode. And yeah, we didn't use maybe less than a third of it, right? Maybe less than a quarter, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but there's still a lot of stuff that can be done with Ars Nouveau. So uh, look for an entire episode coming up uh, just dedicated towards Ars Nouveau. A little deeper dive going into it. Hey, check out these blocks. The engraved dripstone block. I like that. I really like that. Been trying to change out a few blocks, give me a little bit different texture. And also wanted to put a water canal around this thing. Now this is using mangrove, uh, was it mangrove planks? And uh, down at the bottom, we're using the, what's it called? Uh, laid sandstone bricks. Uh, so creating a little border area. And then I'm going to come out and I'm going to finish this off a lot like I did the other islands here uh, to kind of give it floating island feel to it. These islands that are here are actually going to be the way to get over there to it. I'm going to put in an opening here and probably another walkway. And then we're going to do a little bridge coming down to this area, run across some green, and then take another bridge up to this area. Then you have another area green before you go into the temple. I thought that'd be pretty cool. Other than that, haven't really done a whole lot. Been trying to keep, uh, you know, I'm kind of going through and making a list of things that I want to do, things I want to get done, kind of planning out as we get towards the end of chapter two and we start getting into the ATM star itself. Things are going to get a little, little hectic. So want to make sure that everything that I want to accomplish in this series, I get accomplished. So been putting a little bit of a plan together on, on the next, uh, oh, 10 episodes or so and seeing if we can get this thing finalized up. So with part of that in mind, today's episode, we need to do a little bit of housekeeping. There is a lot of this base that is you know, where I've done projects and I put things together and uh, yeah, I mean, basically it's starting to look like uh, a little plate of spaghetti there, right? A little, little bit of spaghetti on there. Things just aren't as clean and crisp as I would like them to be. Uh, so we're going to go through and kind of clean some of this area up and get it a little better organized, kind of like what we've got here. And hopefully then we can also maybe improve on the performance a little bit. So there's a couple of things uh, that I do when I am playing on these servers is I want to make sure my TPS is good. Uh, I want to make sure I'm not getting a lot of lag and things like that. So I'm going to walk you through also the process that I go through for kind of identifying pro potential problem areas within a world. Uh, so that way I can fix them. But before we do that, there is one more thing that I would like to do over at the Enderman farm. Let's run over there. As a reminder, the Enderman farm, we're using this for getting a lot of our apotheosis uh, materials, not the gems, but, you know, getting the mats that we need for upgrading our gems. And I never realized this until I was kind of playing around with apotheosis. 
that there is a tier of gem above flawless and it's called perfect. So let me grab a bunch of our mats together here and let's look at say like the warlord gem. Okay, so we have two flawless warlord gems. And if we take and we put those in there, you can see that if we put in the God for forged pearl and we put in the gem dust and we can hit that and all of a sudden that becomes a perfect gem of the warlord and the stats on it become a lot greater than what we had originally. For example, if we take a look at the uh, flawless gem of the royal family, we can see that we get on helmets, it's a plus 10% to all stats. If we look at the perfect gem, it's plus 15% to all stats. That's a, that's a big bonus. So I did go ahead and I did make and replace the flawless gem that I had in my helmet with the perfect gem to give me the 15%. Uh, and then I also added in on my sword, I went ahead and added a second gem on there. So now I get a plus 10 attack damage plus a plus 40 crit chance on my sword. So the sword is doing 27.5 base damage, plus 10 gets it to 37.5, and then I get a chance to crit after that. So yeah, this thing can do close to 100 uh, points of damage with a single swing if everything hits perfectly. So that's pretty cool. Um, I did not know that, so I wanted to show that, yes, you can take your flawless gems and go one step beyond to turn them into a perfect gem and get all those peak stats off of there. So it took a few minutes and went ahead and got uh, all these gems created up to the perfect level. And we're gonna remove the gems that are currently in them. I didn't think we got the gems back. I thought we lost those. Thought they were lost. Okay, so we can do that and that one. And let's see, that's gonna give us a crit chance first. I don't know if it matters which sequence they go in. I'm going to assume they don't, but I'm going to I'm going to do it just in case they do. I'm going to do it that way, that way. And then we'll do the experience gain one last. Cool. Do armor. Max health. And this should give us another 6 luck. Now uh, give us a plus six armor toughness. Now uh, give us an additional eight armor, and that'll give us another plus ten on our health. And then for the boots, we're just swapping out the twelve point five percent dodge chance for a fifteen percent dodge chance. That's a lot of health. That's a lot of armor. <laughs> We're invincible. Sweet. I had mentioned this. We were going to put this thing all together, but I was going to wait until uh, we were back together for it. And we're back together. Uh, so let's get started with uh, what we're going to be doing here. And as a reminder, we're working within the chunk boundaries for each one of these builds. Uh, so we don't want to extend out beyond that. And I don't need this to be max full size from one end to the other. So I'm thinking about coming in. Uh, there, there, to there. Yeah, so that should be the third line in from the edge on that one, too. So that should be right there, one inside that, and one inside there. Cool. So that will be that size of it. And I'm thinking two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, it's going to be off center just a little bit. So I guess to 10 there, right? Or nine.
They give me an even number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cool. That'll do it right there. Let me fill this out. It has been some time since I've built one of these, but I think if I recall reading the notes, I got to do that, right? And put the rotor bearing in there. Yeah. And then uh, let's make a hole. Get in here. And we should need the shafts. And they go right along like that. Those look cool. That's different from what I remember. That plugs in like that, right? Okay, we need, uh, let's grab eight more Aldemodium blocks. 16 total. And these go down along the end here. It does not have to be all the modium. That's just the best product that I have available to myself at this moment. And then we're going to attach. Not that way. One, two, three. Three. Let's start off with two. I think that was the right decision of not, yeah, because they're not, you can't train, you can't climb through them there, can you? Yeah. Not like the, uh, the pipes from, uh, Awa. I don't know if you ever noticed that. You can just walk right through them. Cool. Okay, that should... I should be the internals of that all done, right? All right, we're going to need two fluid ports. One there and one there. We are going to need a power tap. And I want to put that right here on this side. And then we need the controller. Invalid air block for exterior. Oh, I broke a block over here. Cool. That looks amazing. Okay, we have uh, got the terminal here. I've got the access ports here. Again, one of these is going to have to be input. One of these is going to have to be output. Yes. And then we're going to also need uh, these right here. Uh, that went too far. There we go. Uh, we need a reactor coolant port. Uh, we need two, two of these. Uh, so we're going to do, let's see, direction. We're going to have input on there. This is going to be then the output. And then this is going to be the output and it's going to be an input there. Cool. Uh, let's see, that's an input. So that's an output. Where is my, my pop wrench? Here we go. And then this should be that. Cool. Reactor coolant port. That's the output. Uh, so this should be the steam coming this way. That'll be the water vapor coming back. Uh, just as an added precaution. And just to make sure that we always have enough water in this thing. I'm going to do that as well. Cool. So let's take a look. Are we getting our reservoir filled? Um, not yet. Oh yeah, it is 26, 27 buckets. Cool. Just very slow. I was afraid of that. That's why I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put a universal or a ultimate pipe upgrade on there. We're also going to put one over here as well. 
as one over here. Sweet. Now we are, we're getting water in. That's working. Looks like it. All right, now we need the cables and the importer and the exporter. Like that. All right, we are going to be, this is going to be the input. So this is where we're going to put the export bus. And this is going to be the import bus. Should be able to do that right there. Fuel's coming in. Cool. And we're going to kick this thing on. Generating steam. All right, that is working. Uh, to be able to turn this thing in, though, we are going to need to make uh, the quest screen. I did not realize this. Put this thing right there, and we're going to need to transfer power. And I think we can do it this way right here. Oh, and you, I didn't see this. This is the spot you got to set here. So you click on task and uh, it is this one right here. 10 million, except there it goes. Now it's filling up. So we are generating, we are receiving steam. I think we're just burning it off. Uh, but as soon as I shut that thing down, it was uh, uh, basically done. Next thing I'd like to do though, is increase our capabilities with our power here in the uh, hyper box. So luckily we've been making these nitro crystal essence for a while. And I think we're in a pretty good spot. Let's see nitro. Yeah, I got 20,000 of them. So I can afford to make, uh, you know, a few nitro crystals. <laughs> Just, you know, a couple. There we go. Uh, 1200 should be enough. I, I think, I think we'll be okay with that. Um, and then we want to make the, uh, we do want to make more of the thermo generators, right? That's these here. Yes. Yeah, so we want one, two, three, four, five, six more of those. So let's make six. Are we at the point we can make dark matter blocks? Mm. <laughs> maybe maybe ooh that looks pretty cool Forty five thousand FE a tick. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. That's that's decent. That's decent. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna end up making some more of those. Oh, uh, so we do need to increase our uh ability to store energy over here as well. Uh the energy cell itself is okay. I'm wondering if we should not maybe increase the ender cell here. Um, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So if we were to create some additional energy cells. Okay, I'm going to make a gargantuan uh, storage also for flux, which is like 128 million FE it can store. Uh, but I'm going to need uh, some more. Uh, I'm going to need uh, 1,360 more flux dust. And then we give it a tap. Oh, I didn't get it all. Oh. 
How much did we get? Not enough. All right, let me do this again. That should be enough now. Yeah. All right, so with uh, the gargantuan flux storage area set up, this is at 128 million. Uh, FE is stored inside this, and we'll hit bypass limit on this flux controller as well. Uh, bypass limit, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that'll get us uh, 10 billion worth of storage on network one and 12 billion on network two. That was unfortunate. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, mercy. Uh, let's go ahead anyways while we're here. Because that was going to be something else I was going to do. Let's upgrade this to Nitro, shall we? Uh, we are going to do 36. We're at Niotic. We want to do 36 of these. So let's put that in there. So that'll be one less thing we got to do. All right, I'll be back. Cool. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, because it's already got the settings here for it, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so this should be up and running. It's going to be producing... Uh, 360,000 FE a tick. All right, looks like we are uh, hitting a norm now. So we can see that on on Ender Cell 1, the Ender Network 1, uh, we're at 10 billion FE, um, and it's staying steady. This one's at 11.6, 11 uh, 11.651. So it's going up as well, heading towards 12 billion. So... We've got it all set back up again. This is now full, and we're going to put this on auto mode on. Uh, so it will stop when it's full and start when it has less than 70%. And then over here, these are all getting back up to their 40 million uh, per. And uh, this thing's at 2 gig. That's at 2.14 gig. That's Oh, that's the ender cell there. So, uh, yeah, between the two. Yeah, feeling good, feeling good about that. Uh, energy, 128 million, and this thing is full also. So I think that's a success for our power. Uh, we're going to build some more of the dark matter blocks, and we're going to replace out the rest of those as we go along. Okay, we're ready to start updating now uh, some of our network connections here. And this is uh, these cables that run the basic universal they do store power within them so i'm going to go ahead and break that plug and let that start draining down and while it does i'm going to go ahead and craft up i'm just going to use hardened gates on these um for most of the stuff around here because those they don't require like a whole lot of power especially these crafters uh so i don't want to like you know like put something on there it's going to be moving uh what was it uh 1 million FE a tick. I don't think we need to do that. So we're going to kick that down. And we're going to let these drain out. Make sure that's all on channel one. There you go. And now look, I can move around this thing. <laughs> How sweet is that? Ah, yeah. All right, let's keep going. Same thing here. I want to drain this all out of power. Now, this may actually take a long time to drain out of power. Over in this area, I am going to leave this set up like it is for right now. Uh, this, however, I don't think we need to keep this anymore. Uh, we are we don't have any latex in there at the moment. Um but I don't think we're really going to need a whole lot of latex. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to remove this setup. Uh, and we're going to leave, uh, we're going to take 
Hmm. I take that off of there and we'll use a couple gates on that. And if we need to reset up the latex stuff, we can. I don't foresee it being something that we're going to need to work on much. But you never know. We'll leave it there. This area is going to stay just the way it is. Uh, this area here. Mm, we're going to end up relocating this here shortly. So I'm going to leave this untouched for now. Um, yeah, we're going to leave this untouched for now. I don't think there's anything else here that really we need to mess with. This is still like a nasty mess. <laughs> Uh, and we could do some stuff about this. Probably need to. All right. That's a little better. Still connected right here. There we go. That's a little better. That'll give me a little more space coming through here. Okay. Would like to take care of this area right here. We need to, we need to move all of these out of here. We need to move all the patterns out of this area here and get them down into the other one. So let me start, let me start working on that. That'll take just a minute uh, to get that done. So uh, hang tight. Okay. Now we're just going to go through and make sure that we've got acceleration cards and all of these new molecular assemblers. Uh, these are the ones that were upstairs and we've got the pattern providers down here now. We shouldn't have anything else left in this one. No. All right, let's get rid of. How did you get down here, Gerald? How did Gerald get down here? Did I leave a hole someplace? Uh, I sure did right there. <laughs> That's funny. Now I would like to relocate the crafting processors. Like that. Now I want to over here in this area is where I would like to put in these and we're going to kind of set them right into this wall. I think I have to separate them out. I think I have to separate them out. Uh, we are going to double check. So we've got crafting, uh, storage, crafting storage and co-processing units. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in a co-processing unit. We're going to put it right there. And we're going to put the four 256s right below it. The other co-processing unit here. And we're going to put uh, another one there. And we're going to turn this one into a double uh, when we get that all done. So that way it balances out. There we go. And let's go ahead and put our 216Ks there. And we'll put another 256 there. So now we should be back up to having three. Yeah, three CPUs. Cool. All right, let's expand upon this. So caf uh, crafting coprocessor, let's make another one of those. So let's drop that in right there. There we go. That one's booted up. Now, does it register as three or four? Okay, we're still registering as just having three processors, and that is okay by me. I went ahead and added two more on here. And I am waiting for one more 256K. Guess I miscounted. Need one more. Come here, Gerald. 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 Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Got some nice juicy seeds for you. <laughs> Got him. My goodness. That boy ain't right. There you go, buddy. You stay up here. I should have this one ready to go. <laughs> there. So that gives us now five processors uh, with one of them being uh, over a million 
Let's talk about storage here just a little bit. We've got uh, we've got several of these storage controllers that are set up and storing items uh, in different locations, and it's the same product. So over at the mob farm, we've got a compacting drawer, not a compact drawer, but a storage drawer over there for iron and gold and diamonds and things like that. But we also have it here. And when we are using this stuff, we want a majority of the stuff to be stored here. Uh, and we don't want stuff to go into our drives, but I would like to be able to use the stuff that's over there. Uh, so we need to set up prioritization on this. Uh, so from this storage bus, we're going to click on this priority and we're going to make this the highest priority. So we're going to go like 9,999 or 12,000. I mean, that's you know, I don't think we need to go any higher than that. Yeah, let's just do 9999. So that makes this the highest priority item or the highest priority location. Uh, so it's going to insert into here first. Here we go. Uh, and we're going to make this one like a negative 1000. So that would make this the lowest priority first. Uh, so what should happen is if I were to, uh, let's look at diamonds. Uh, for example, we got 668. So now if I go to diamonds and I pull out a stack, uh, we'll do that and take a look at, see we're at zero here. So it's going to pull them out of this area first. Uh, which is exactly what I want. Uh, when they go back into the system, they're going to go into the other one first. Um, and so when I put these back in, the expected result is this will still be at zero. Yeah, perfect. Okay, that's what I want. It is now probably a good idea for me to stop being a noob. And uh, let's use... Feral flare lanterns. We get rid of some of these torches that are everywhere. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of all these torches that are everywhere. I want to have to get me a slower pick and see it already. I'm going to hit F7 so we can see the overlay uh, what we're dealing with here as we clear out the torches. Yeah, see that got nice and dark. So I'm going to put... Uh, uh, I think here I'm going to use just the regular, like right above that. I think that's pretty cool. Oh, let's get rid of that one too. Um, and then we're going to do another one, I think, just like right here in the middle. So that's that's the majority of the mood lighting that we're going to be setting, right? Um, and then back up above here is where we're putting the Feral Flare Lantern. Here we go. And you. Yeah. That's much better. I don't like having torches everywhere. It's like one of those necessary evils in the beginning, but after a while, it just becomes tacky. We're going to do that. And then we'll just put a couple more of these lanterns. Like maybe like right in the middle here like that. That'll be all right. Okay. I don't think we need anything over on this side, but we'll do another one like in the middle here too. Kind of balanced. All right. That takes care of lighting on this level. Hey, <laughs> get all the stinking torches. All right. I mean, technically, we're good. We're good. But I'm gonna put I'll put these on either side here, like that. Yeah, I think that'll look good. I think that'll look good. And I'll put this one like right there in the middle. Put one in the middle on this side too. Balance. I think it's good. Sweet. All right, this area, definitely want to clear this area out. 
this is probably going to be another spot for feral flares. And I think if I just drop it in like right there, that may be enough to, to kind of cover everything. Uh, we'll see. And just to make sure we kind of kill mob spawning over here, I'm going to go ahead and throw down a mega torch over here by this feral flare lantern. So that should... One, the, the Feral Flare Lantern should knock it so we don't have any, any light issues over here. But just, uh, just in case, we'll go ahead and throw that out there also. All right, I think that's actually pretty good. Now, one of the things that I always like to do after I make any kind of changes to my system, whenever I change out cables or I add you know something big like that, uh, there is a mod in here that is called Observable. Um, this is a really good mob, and it, it allows you to see what's lagging out your world. There is a key bind to it. I've changed mine to scroll lock, uh, so I can do that. So what I want to do is I'm going to click this profile TPS, and it's going to do like a 30-second test. And then it's going to visualize the TPS units uh, for all the items in the world. All right, and this is what we get from the the observable. Uh, it'll show you blocks and remember, I guess I shouldn't say blocks. Remember that anything that can be interacted with has an impact on the server. So you see the 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 more impact it has, then the darker in the color it goes. So there's marine fisher, uh, and, and I don't know what that US is, but it's 69 per tick. And that's three per tick. So you can see there's some red items that we have. Uh, there's a bad couple bad red ones. Let's see what this is. So this is our modular router, uh, 863. I think when you hit like 1,000 uh, units, that would be like one tick. There's some stuff in here, which I would expect. Let's take a look and see uh, what these items are here. So pop through here. Okay, well, that's not too bad. Uh, I expect it to be worse, but uh, that one's kind of surprising right there, actually. That that one's kind of surprising to have that one so high. Yeah, the, the routers, not all the routers react like this. You'll see, you'll see that one is, uh, but this one's not. Um, so this one may be because it just constantly has a flow of items going through it. Maybe that's what it is. The more items flowing through it as possible. That's what's causing that. Yeah, this isn't too bad, actually. I'm kind of excited about that. Hey, look, I'm creating 280, and Gerald is a 139. <laughs> Looks really good. Actually, I think we are probably, for as much stuff as we have over here. Uh, oh, that's a nice little dark area. Let's go check this one out, see what's going on here. Oh, for the click machine. Yeah. Anything that, that does clicks like that um, is going to. So if we go down to like that. We can reduce it. We won't see the impact here right now for making changes because that's, you know, that this is what it was when it took the sampling. Uh, we'd have to run another sample to see it. Finally, one of the things I would like to do is our inventory of items in our in our drives. You can see we are um, starting to get to that 63 of 63 on a lot of stuff. And that's no bueno. Um, we're starting, we're still getting like a lot of variety of items um, that we don't need. So uh, we're gonna do a quick check here. I'm gonna do uh, like that, EMC. Um, and we can then look at items that have EMC that are in our inventory system and they don't need to be right. So we can get rid of like, there's a bunch of, uh, Zycraft gems. We can get rid of those. So see that, that cleared up a little bit there. Other thing that we can do is if we take a look at, uh, I think it's armor. Okay. So yeah, see, we got like golden boots, golden boots. We don't need those. We can pull that out of there. Horse armor, let's pull it out. Um, you know, there's things like that that are in there that we that we don't need. Uh, so it's things like that going through and checking. Now we got, you know, three of those are now. Um, if you, one of the things that I also like to do is you can sort by number of items and you can do uh, descending or ascending. 
Um, and then I'm going to turn this off to just show stored items. So now we can see, you know, like, oh, here's, you know, a bunch more crossbows are in here piling up. Uh, yeah, we've got lots of like individual onesies and twosies things that uh, probably don't need to be in here. Yeah, see, now, now that's looking a lot, lot better. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the current state of the world that we're in. The server's been handling everything that I've put together quite well. Next episode, though, we're going to expand it and see how far we can take it by building what I'm calling the ultimate sieving factory here in All the Mods 9 to the Sky. Thanks for spending time with me. This is Shino, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.